Hello everyone, welcome to this new lesson. And uh, today we have a uh, speaking workshop, of course, but before we begin, I want to teach you idioms that you must know, okay? So I want you to remember this idiom because do you remember the previous lesson when we you were talking to to Jasper and he said it's up to you or he used expressions that probably you didn't understand due to the fact that you have a lack of vocabulary, I mean idioms. Yep. So we have to cover that part and then you start with your speaking uh, simulation. Okay? Then I'm going to give you feedback, of course. So please, uh, Denise, read the first idiom. Under the weather. What does it mean? To feel? to feel ill when you are sick. Okay, so how do you use it? If someone says they're feeling under the weather, your response should be, I hope you, you feel better. Not, would you like to borrow my umbrella? Because the weather is me, it means that you are sick. Did you understand the and Jimmy? Yep. Yeah. So for example, yeah. you, you can say, well, if you fell under the weather, you should, I mean, go to the doctor, you should do something, okay, to care about yourself. Did you understand the expression under the weather? Yeah? Yes, only with the verb feel. Yes, with feel. Because, yeah, always with feel, always, always, always. It is like this expression, for example, we have, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, have you heard that expression before, right? In Spanish? Yep. Uh, we can say if I'm not wrong. Yes, that's true. But I prefer to use uh, if I'm not mistaken. So you can make up your mind and you choose the one that you like a lot. Okay? Did mm -hmm. you understand what I'm trying to say? So you can use another word like I am, but I always, I always... Uh, I'm saying, you know, I'm always saying I un feel under the weather. I am feeling under the weather. You got the one? Yes. Please, the second one, uh, Jimmy, please read that the, the idiom. The ball is in your court. Mm -hmm. Read the meaning. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. It's up to you. It's your move. Now read the definition. When some some, uh, some issue or problem is in your side, something like that. Yes, it's up to you. The ball is in your cup. For example, maybe you want someone to make a decision. You can say, well, the ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. Okay, but it doesn't or it doesn't have to do with a sport. Okay, this is when you make up your mind. Do you know what or what does make up your mind mean? To make up your mind, do you know? Mm. To make a decision. To make a decision. So instead of saying, hey, you need to make a decision. You need to make up, make up your mind, make up your mind. So when you make up your mind, this is your decision, so it's up to you. The ball is in your court. Did you understand? Denise, yeah. did you understand this expression? Yeah, right? Or any questions about the ball is in your court? No, right? No. Okay, it's cool. It's the same. Pick up your mind and the ball is in your court. Uh, yes, the ball is in your court. Make a decision. Make a decision. So, make up your mind to make a decision. Did you understand? Good. Spill the beans. What does spill the beans mean? To give away the secret. Suelta la sopa. Okay? In Spanish we say suelta la sopa, but in English, spill the beans. Give away the secret. How do you use it? How do, how do you use it? If you told someone about their own surprise party, you have spill the beans. Or even let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, that the second one, well, for example, if you are a lady girl, you said, let the cat out of the bag. Let the cat out of the bag. Okay? 
Did you understand the expression spill the beans? Es como cuenta todo. Yeah, spill the beans. Suéltalo todo. ¿Ok? Any questions about these three expressions? Nope. <laughs> Tell me. No questions? No, no, no. Okay. It's for me? Yeah. Okay. What about you, you Denise? Any questions about spill the beans? No. Crystal clear. Yeah, go, go, go. Quickly. Then we have break a leg. Do you know what does break a leg mean? Buena suerte. Uh -huh. Break a leg. Break a leg. What does pull someone's leg? Pull someone's leg? I'm pulling your leg. Are you kidding me? You are, yes, are you kidding me? And then we have this expression, wind someone up. For example, hey, what are you so angry? I just wanted to wind you up. Solo te estaba molestando, ¿ah? No te estaba diciendo en serio. Wind someone up. Did you understand? Yep. Wind someone up, pull someone legs. Did you understand? Okay. Okay, yeah. next. Sat. Uh, in this case, on the fence. On the fence. If you are sat on the fence, remember this verb is in participle. You be undecided. You've not decided which side of the argument you agree with. Okay? So, you are like in a quandary. Estás como que? I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether. You see my point here? I've sat or I am sat on the fence. Cuando tú te sientas en la, en la banca, en estas plazas de armas, quiere decir que no sabes qué hacer. Okay? No sabes si ir o no ir. Okay? Yes, pero no confundir con estar entre la espada y la pared, que es I am between a rock and a hard place, which is different. Estar entre la espada y la pared son dos opciones que una te puede hacer daño y la otra también, ¿cierto? Yes. Si vas, te roban. Si no vas, pierdes el dinero. You are between a rock and a hard place. Pero cuando tú dices I am sad on the fence, puede que las dos cosas sean buenas, no sé si comer pollito a la brasa o ceviche, los dos me gustan, I am sat on the fence, did you understand? Yeah. Ok, entonces uno es para cosas buenas, el otro es para cosas malas. This one, number seven, through thick and thin. Ok, for example, often used to describe families with best friends. It means that you you are by each other's side no matter what happens. Okay, through the bad times, as well, es como decir las buenas y malas. Okay, uh, through thick and thin. Así se dice la expresión. You know, she is my oh, she is my sister. Through thick and thin. En lo bueno y lo malo. Okay, no matter what, siempre ser leal. Next, we have here, once in a blue moon, means rarely. You know, I play soccer once in a blue moon. Did you understand? Once yeah. in a blue moon. And I explained this one, number nine, like five classes in pre uh, previous this one. It's the best thing since sliced the bread. Something that is really, really innovative. Something that is really new. You can say, wow, it's the best thing since it's light bread. You get it? Yes. Algo moderno, es el iPhone número 20. Wow, this is the best thing since it's light bread. You know, I can see this device once in a blue moon, or I use my cell phone once in a blue moon because nobody called me. Even when my mother is really important to me, you know, through thick and thin, you can combine the idioms. Did you understand? Yeah. Good. And the last three ones. This one. Take it with a pinch of salt. Which means, don't take it seriously. Don't take it seriously. I heard that the elephants can fly now, but Sam often makes up a story. So I take everything he saw, he says, sorry, with a pinch of salt. No me lo tomo en serio. Okay? Hey, you know, Jimmy is telling everyone but things about you. Hey, you know, I take it with a pinch of salt. You know, I don't care what he is saying because that is not a consequence to me.
take it with a pinch of salt. ¿Ok? Tomarlo con una pizca de sal. Come and rain and shine. No matter what. No matter what. So you can say, for example, I'll be at your football game. Come rain or shine. Así llueve o así truene, creo en español, ¿cierto? Así but, but shine here is brillar. Yes, pero para buscarle el semejante, el cognate sería como que así llueva y así truene. I'll be there. ¿Cierto? Yes, come and rain or shine. I, this expression is very, very... Go down in flames is to fail spectacularly. You know, yesterday I took an exam or I sat an exam and I went down in flames. Did you understand these 12 expressions? Any questions? I will ask you and then you start with your speaking simulation. Okay, por ejemplo, quiero que me busquen el, el parecido en inglés. Okay, empezamos. Si me siento mal, ¿cómo puedo decir en lugar I am sick? Under the weather. Under, I am under the weather. I am under the weather. You stop. I feel. I I feel. You can say I am feeling under the weather because I am feeling sick or I feel under the weather. Okay? Next one. You know, hey, you need to make a decision, Denise. Another way to say that. You need to make up your mind. You need to. Or another expression that I can use. The. You know? Ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. La pelota está en tu cancha. Tú tomas la decisión. Semejante, ¿ok? The ball is in your court. Por ejemplo, cuando ustedes puedan hablar en inglés, you know, well, you know, it's really important that students uh, practice their, I don't know, their English in public schools. But, you know, uh, the government, the ball is in your court or is in the court. You can use that, ¿ok? You can have some variations. How do you say? Hey, cuéntanos todo. Suelta el chisme. Spill the bills. Or, or, spill the bills, or. No, let. Let the cat out. Let the cat out of the bag. Saca el gato de la, de la bolsa. También puede que sea un semejante como que. Es como cuando nosotros en español decimos Acá hay gato encerrado Algo así, ¿no se han escuchado? Yes. ¿O no significa eso? Cuando hay gato encerrado es que se sospecha que hay algo, ¿no? Mm. Yeah So let yeah. the cat out of the bag Es como, yeah, tell everything, tell everything Oh yeah, good, good No, no, es diferente, es diferente <laughs> Yeah, it's different Another way to say, buena suerte, good luck Un nativo, ¿qué diría? Start with a V. Do you know? It started with a B. Ah, break a leg. Break a leg. No sé si han visto en películas que le dicen, hey, rompete una pierna. Y tú dices, ¿por qué le dice que le rompa una pierna? No. Es que break a leg es la expresión. Viene de, de Shakespeare. ¿Cómo se dice? Oye, me estás tomando el pelo, ¿ah? ¿eh? Me estás tomando el pelo. No me tomes el pelo. Are you pulling my leg? Are you pulling my leg? Or otra forma de decir Are you pulling my leg? Oye, me estás molestando, ¿no? Are you winding, winding me up? Wind me up es molestar, ¿no? She winds me up. Ella me molesta. She winds me up. Good. Hoy oh, no sé qué hacer. No sé si ir a la fiesta. Yo, ¿cómo estoy? Estoy indeciso. Otra forma de decir indeciso, no saber qué hacer. Pero para cosas buenas. I, I am sad on the fence. I am sad on the fence. Y si son cosas malas, como que si voy, pierdo el dinero. Si voy, uh, me dan el producto. Y si no voy, se quedan con el dinero. Igual es algo malo. Si voy, me roban. Y si me quedo, me roban igual. ¿Qué? ¿Cómo I estoy? A rock and a hard place. Amazing. I'm between a rock and a hard place. Uh, next. Tienes que ser lo, le, leal sin importar qué. Hay una expresión. Hey, na, na, na. She is your mother. Na, na, na. She is your sister. Na, na, na. She is my best friend. I need to help her. ¿Qué expresión dirían? Para enfatizar que tú eres leal. Through? Through what? Ah. Mm -hmm. 
Through thick and through thick and thin. Through thick and thin. Ok, como en las buenas y malas, ¿no? Thick es grueso, en thin delgado. Ok. Uh -huh. Es una expresión, la dices junto, ok. Through thick and thin. You know, uh, the government. Well, this is not because this is not your family. You can say, I'm going to help her because she is my sister, you know? Through thick and thin. Ok. Another that you can use, how do you say rarely? Another way to say rarely, for example, rara vez. Como sushi. Once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon, of course. Once in a blue moon. Ah, oye, este microphone is, es lo mejor. It's super cool. This is. Ah, this is the best thing since sliced bread. The best sí. thing since, is, since sliced bread. Esta es la mejor cosa desde el pan de molde. Sliced bread, pan de molde, ¿no? Slice bread. Es pan bimbo. Slice bread. Next. Oye, no lo tomes en serio. Estaba bromeándote. Mira, no lo tomes en serio. Estaba bromeándote nada más. Utiliza dos idioms. Mm, take it with a pinch of salt. Ya le dices, no lo tomes en serio. Te estoy bromeando. I uh, am. You should take it. I am pulling. I am pulling your leg. I am pulling your leg. Ah, okay. Okay. Por ejemplo, ¿cómo dirían esto? Mira, miran esto. A ver, dirían, no lo tomes en serio. Te estoy bromeando. Yo iré sin importar qué, incluso aunque falle majestuosamente. Ah, a ver, lo voy a escribir. Miren. Y ustedes quiero que piensen, ¿cómo lo dirían? Así, mira. No lo tomes en serio. Te estaba bromeando. Te estaba bromeando. Ok. No estoy mal. Ok. No estoy mal. Pero. Sin importar. Que. Lo haré. Incluso. O aunque. Falle. Como los grandes. A ver, ¿cómo dirían todo esto? No lo tomes en serio, te estaba bromeando. No estoy mal, pero sin importar qué, lo haré. Aunque falle como los grandes. A ver, ¿alguna idea? Ok, take it with a pinch of salt. Um, uh, I only pulling I your legs. I was pulling your legs. I was pulling your legs. No estoy I'm not bad. No, I'm not bad. bad. Pero te I'm refieres que no está enfermo, thing. que no está enfermo, no estoy mal. Ah, ok. I'm not under the water. I am not? Or I... I am not feeling I'm under the water. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, wait. I'm, 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 I'm not? I am not feeling. Ok, no se coman el verbo to be. I am not feeling under the water. Sin importar qué. No matter what. Otra forma de decir no matter what. Come... Come rain or, or shine, I'll do it. Okay? Although I, although I, how do you say fallar? Come rain or shine. Although I, although I, I go down in flames. I go, I even, okay, of course, I go down in flames. Si tú dices eso, wow, como un antiguo. ¿Ok? Did you understand? Es una muy buena forma de practicar. Entonces hemos terminado con las 12 expresiones. Ahora vamos a empezar con su speaking simulation. ¿Ok? Yeah. Ok, les venía a comentar de que ahora estoy trabajando con la herramienta Teams, que ya no se corta. Con Teams no se corta. ¿Ok? Uh, sí. Pueden usar su browser, ¿ok? Les aviso para la próxima lección, les instalen con Teams. Uh, pueden ver las nuevas clases que he subido, todas las estoy subiendo con Teams. Se ve que la pueden encender su cámara y ya no sale su rostro. Uh, solamente el rostro se ve aquí, no se ve en la grabación, incluso cuando grabo con otro programa. Les estoy avisando por si uh, pueden instalarse la herramienta Teams porque ahora el, el Zoom se corta, entonces me incomoda eso, ¿ok? Entonces, o oh, usamos el Teams para que esté más cool. 
Voy a compartir mi pantalla. ¿Pueden verla? ¿Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Entonces vamos a empezar con este speaking simulation. Uh, estoy preparado. Uh, tengo mis apuntes. Si pueden, incluyan las expresiones eh, que han estado uh, usando el día de hoy. Go in flames or uh, through thick and thin. Uh, you know, if you feel under the weather, you should stop watching videos on TikTok, maybe. Okay? You got it? ¿Se entiende, cierto? Yes. yes. Empezamos. Uh, who is gonna be A? Any volunteers? You, Denise, maybe? Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy is A <laughs> and Denise is B. Okay. I sent a document with some expressions. Did you get that one, uh, Jimmy? Yeah. You yeah, can use the expression. Okay. Empecemos. Three, two, one, go. Good afternoon, my name is Becca and this is my colleague Sam. And your names are? I'm Jimmy. I'm Denise. For example, if, when you are talking to someone uh, in the, uh, who is from the US, they always have a nickname. Okay? ¿Han escuchado en las películas que se llama Big Mike? Uh, todos tienen un apodo. Es común. Mm. Ok, entonces cuando ustedes se presenten con un nativo pueden decir, you know, well, my name is Jimmy, but you can call me Jim. Para que generes esa sensación de confianza. But you can call me, pero puedes llamarme. Ok, o puedes decir tu nombre, tu apellido y le dices, but you can call me Jimmy. Did you understand Denise and Jimmy? Yeah. Ok. Yeah. Es, es una forma casual. Así como, por ejemplo, creo que en Perú. A nosotros, cuando llega alguien a nuestra casa, le ofrecemos algo para comer, ¿cierto? Entonces, ya es normal también. Ustedes no invitan nada. <ríe> ¿Do you invite something? No? I hope so. Thank you. First of all, we'd like to know something about you. Candidate A, where are you from? I'm from, from Peru. I, I live in Lima. Uh, And I live with my parents. <laughs> Thank you. Candidate B, where are you from? I'm from the countryside. It's uh, not the city, but I live in Cañete, and it's far away of the city that is Lima. And it's a good place to live in. Thank you. Candidate A, do you like cooking for your friends? Yeah, when I uh, invite uh, to my friends um, at home, uh, I usually to to give some some dishes or maybe some some uh, some Candidate some Are you a person who enjoys talking? Dennis. Uh, sorry. One more, time, one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. Enjoy talking. Candidate B, are you a person who enjoys talking? Yeah, I enjoy talking with my friends and my family. And, but due to the pandemic, I, I can uh, talk with them. Uh, just Thank for video call. Thank you. Candidate A, do you like sports? Mm, yeah, I used to ride a bicycle. Um, I try to discover new routes, and sometimes, uh, once in a month, I used to play football. Thank you. Candidate B, do you enjoy sharing photos online? No, I don't like that. I, I prefer um, to see pictures of my friends, um, or take um, photos, uh, but, uh, And also Thank you. In this part of the test, I'm going to give each of you two photographs. I'd like you to talk about your photographs on your own for about a minute and also to answer a question briefly about your partner's photographs. Candidate A, it's your turn first. Here are your photographs. They show people 
who have chosen different forms of transport. I'd like you to compare the photographs and say why the people might have chosen these forms of transport. All right? All right. Okay. Um, I, um, I see um, that some people uh, used, to, used to fly in the plane uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's safe. No, um, to travel to different to different places in the country, but um, some people likes to likes to ride a motorcycle uh, because uh, they like adrenaline. No, um, and well, um, for these people, uh, uh, it, um, it doesn't. I try to say it doesn't matter, but I. <laughs> Uh, okay, it doesn't matter that dangerous, but uh, but I I think maybe it's uh, it's amazing, no? And, uh, but in both of them, when you travel with your friend, is uh, is fun. Thank you, candidate B. Do you like traveling by plane? Uh, uh, yes, I like uh, traveling by plane. Uh, because I I can uh, only spend um, um, just a few a time in the transport and go um, uh, the place that I want to go, and it's it's the easiest way to to go uh, to another place. Now, candidate B, here are your photographs. They show people enjoying different kinds of entertainment. I'd like you to compare the photographs and say why the people might have chosen these forms of entertainment. All right? Mm, well, um, the first picture shows um, two clowns, and this is a circus, I think. And um, people like to to see that kind of entertainment uh, because it's uh, really funny. I, I, you can spend. Um, you can share good moments with your family, and uh, the second one I think is uh, when you stay at home uh, watching a movie, and it's, it's also good uh, when you spend your time uh, with someone in close to you, and and you are at home is a comfortable place that you you want to, to, to be. Thank you. Candidate A, do you enjoy watching horror movies? No, I usually, I once in a blue moon, I used to see this kind of pictures. Uh, but um, uh, some friends uh, pull on me pulling my leg when I try to, to see a new movie and um, they used to used to play this this kind of no this kind of uh, horror movie no I don't like it but uh, now I, I'd like you to talk about something together for about two minutes I'd like you to imagine that a large department store is offering students the opportunity of doing work experience here are some ideas they're thinking about and a question for you to discuss. First, you have some time to look at the task. Now, talk to each other about what skills students might learn by doing these jobs. Um, I start um, with uh, I'm very, very, very low there. Uh, hi. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, dealing with customer complaints, you can, uh, a student might learn uh, how to treat people and, and uh, also how to manage uh, difficult uh, and selling food in the cafeteria 
and you can learn about how to prepare uh, this or uh, coffee or how to use that coffee maker and also um, uh, can help you to learn and, uh, the art and the, what people uh, uh, tell you uh, or ask you. I hear you so far, so far away. Really? Yes. Hi. Yeah, okay. Well, I was talking about dealing with customer complaints and selling food in the cafeteria. And what do you reckon, Kimi, about the others? The others? Mm, okay. Uh, I am. I feel that I am sad of the fence because there are a lot of shoes. Uh, but in this case, mm, maybe uh, dealing with a customer complaints. Is, is important, no? It's a it's, it's an important skill because uh, uh, some um, uh, some service uh, some employers don't don't uh, don't have patience with the customer, no? Um, yeah, and um, used to fight, for example, no? And don't try to to resolve this in the in the better in a better way. Um, well, in for for uh, all uh, for other for other options, uh, I never I uh, have never um, working like that. But uh, if I have a friend uh, um, and they need to to take these skills, I just to say uh, I I wish I break a leg for him, no, because uh, it's. Uh, it's very, it's a, it's a job very, very hard, you know, because you try to, to talk, for example, uh, you try to clean him probably, you try to deal with a customer, or maybe you, uh, okay, you, you, you are arranging displays in the show windows, or taking payments, you know, you have to, to, to take different tasks, you know, in the, in our restaurants, for example. Thank you. Well, now you okay. have about a minute to decide which two jobs would give them the most valuable experience for the future. Uh, okay, teacher, please. Mm -hmm. And which the of two, these two, two, two options are the more valuable for the students? Ah, okay. Windows. You have to make teacher, a I that a ranking displays. What did you say? Arrange? Right, a yes. Can you hear me? Is low? Yeah, there is background noise. It seems like you are uh, at a party. <laughs> no, no. Not at home. Oh, really? Uh, maybe it's the, what, the TV. Maybe it's that TV. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. arranging. Arranging displays in shop windows. Arrange means like displays, like when you pass through here. Uh, we need someone who can clean the kitchen and they cluster. Las personas que entregan volantes, las personas que pegan publicidad, ellos son arranging displays in shop windows. Mm. Como volanteros. Eh, entregan volantes pero pegas en las ventanas, en las paredes. Make up your mind, guys. You have to choose two of them. It could be dealing with customer complaints. Is you can discover if you are a people person, and but, and you can learn about um, social skills and selling food in the cafeteria. And cleaning the department store at night. Mm. I would choose dealing with customer complaints. Uh, in, in my humble opinion, I choose uh, dealing with a customer complaints and selling food in a cafeteria because you try to, to talk with different customers 
um, maybe you learn about this experience. Yeah, selling food in the cafeteria is also a good job mm, because you learn how to to prepare dishes or to make maybe and how to choose the the ingredients. Um, Thank you, candidate A. How difficult do you think it is to work and study at the same time? Mm. I think it's so hard. Um, on rain or shine, that you force, but uh, but uh, but these uh, these tasks are so difficult. Um, well, but when you stay in this uh, in this environment, okay, only take it with a pinch of salt because uh, all past, no, all things must pass. <laughs> nice use of the expression. Take it with a pinch of salt. Okay guys, please click in the same link and you will get your feedback and new expressions and grammar lesson, okay? Click on it please. Click on it. And nivel avanzado, o sea, del nivel que ya están entrando. Pero un poquito más, ¿ok? Entonces pueden tomar un screenshot, que sería genial porque veo que Jimmy, por ejemplo, tú lo usas, pero con palabras simples. Ok, presten atención. Cuando ustedes quieran decir cualquier cosa, ¿ok? Van a decir whatever. Por ejemplo, mira. Whatever, whatever he's, he always said, cualquier cosa, o okay, que él siempre dice, he always said whatever he thought. Él siempre dice cualquier cosa que él pensaba o él siempre decía cualquier cosa que él pensaba ok después de whatever podemos incluir una cláusula que es un subject más un verbo ok como dirías uh, cualquier cualquier cosa que yo haga no te gusta como dirían eso cualquier cosa que yo haga no te gusta whatever whatever I do I whatever do. I do coma you don't, you don't. Like, like it? you don't, whatever you do, you don't like it. ¿Se entendió el primer uso del whatever? Yes, whatever. Right. También, por ejemplo, cualquier comida que hago no te gusta. Whatever dish I make or I prepare, you don't like it. Whatever dish. Did you understand? ¿Se entendió? Luego yes. tenemos whoever. Whoever es quien quiera o quien sea. Por decir, quien sea que te dijo eso es mentira. Whoever told you that, it's not true, it's not true, or it's a lie, whoever, más el verbo, ok, luego también, whenever, however, y whatever, estos tres sí o sí necesitan una cláusula que es un sujeto más un verbo, por ejemplo, ¿cuándo dirían, ¿Se acuerdas, Denise, la clase del día viernes que llevaste con Roxanne, ¿Cómo decías, cuando sea que pueda, ¿te acuerdas? We. Ever. Whenever Never. I get the, the chance. Whenever I get the chance. Ok. Whenever I get the chance. Whenever. Cuando sea. However. Como sea que. And whatever. Donde sea. Ok. Como dirías. Donde sea que te encuentres. Estás en peligro. Whatever. Whatever you are, you are in danger. Yes, whatever you are, you are in danger. Okay? Did you understand this grammar? Por ejemplo, Jimmy, quiero que use algunas de las expresiones que dijiste, mira. Cuando yo invito a mis amigos a casa, whenever I... I invite? Invite, or whenever I can invite my friends. Siempre que yo pueda invitar a mis amigos, ¿Ok? Para que suene más natural. Un whenever, whenever, whoever, whatever. Y el whatever. Whatever es una de las palabras más usadas en inglés. ¿Ok? Es una de las palabras más usadas. Puedes buscar en Google Diagrams y te sale el, el nivel de uso de cada palabra. Entonces, vamos a practicar un poquito. Por ejemplo, aquí. Use the relative uh, pronouns. ¿Ok? Mira, dice, I can recognize people's accent. It doesn't matter where. They are from, ¿qué dirían? Sin importar de dónde ellos son, dirías. 
Whatever. Whatever. Whatever they are from. The second one. People often resist new methods. Anytime. Anytime that. Whenever. Whenever. And in this case, most students enjoy learning. Anyway that, de cualquier forma, they are thought they are taught face to face or online. Uh, most students enjoy learning, however. However, yeah. yes. Carlos, pero however no significa sin embargo. Sí. Pero necesitamos una coma para que tenga ese valor. You know? Mm -hmm. I can speak English. However, coma. I can understand when I'm listening to music. Sin embargo, coma. Okay? But cuando vas sin coma, es este however. Ahí no, no, hay, no hay como equivocarte. ¿Ok? A ver, una más aquí. Tratemos de completar. I can work on my, ta on my tablet. What is the answer? I can work on my table. On my tablet. Uh, um, Whenever I take an hour exam. Whatever, I'm, whatever I may be. Yo puedo trabajar en mi tableta, donde sea que yo pueda, en con, encontrarme. Ok, donde sea que yo pueda ah, estar. donde podría estar, ¿no? Es como, I may be, ¿no? Yes, I may be. The second one, I get very nervous. No, whenever I take an hour to talk. I'll accept the college decision. Whoever they choose. Whoever they choose. And whatever we learn today, cualquier cosa que aprendamos hoy. Real, real, yeah, it'll be out in 10 years time. You know, facts. Facts. Cuando quieren enfatizar que algo es realmente cierto, dice la expresión facts. Pero no vayan, no vayan a decir facts, sino facts. A, F, C, T. Me pasó en, en, ahora estoy enseñando ALS, y dicen facts, no. Eso de aquí es... La, la grosería ah. Fuck Fuck What did you say bro? No Fuck Fuck Hechos Algo cierto Ok También lo usamos de manera casual ¿No? Oye Carlos Yo creo Esta Inca Cola Esta gaseosa Inca Cola Es la mejor que existe en Perú Fact Es un hecho real Te puedo decir Fact Ok Good Only to, to say fact Sí Fact Fact, fact. Uh, Final Sí, al final, cuando alguien diga algo y tú estás de acuerdo con esta persona, ya, yeah, estoy de acuerdo, fact. Es más común que decir, I agree with you, I agree, fact, fact, hechos y hechos y nada más que hechos, ¿ok? Mm. A ver aquí ustedes, complete the sentence using a relative pronoun with ever. Device, este es un verbo que lo vimos al inicio del curso, device, ¿se acuerdan qué es? Device. Device, ¿qué cosa era device for you? Device. Dice, for example, yo te digo, uh, this course, this course is device to uh, Spanish speakers. Design. Design. Diseñado. Very good. Very good. What's the answer here? We have a verb. We have a verb, obviously. Uh, so, no. However. Ya, como sea. Weber, 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 quien sea. Quien Weber. sea, quien sea qué. Device. Device. No. no. Yes. A, ah. Device. Quien sea que diseñó este programa ha hecho un montón de dinero de este. Number And two. Why we did it? Ah, because. Ah, it's a pass? Yes. Ah, Whoever device, device, quien quiera que diseñó este programa. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Porque hasta ahora sigue haciendo el dinero. Lo hizo en el pasado. Good. Number two. The great thing about online courses is they can be followed by anyone. B. You have the very B. Whenever. 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 They. They. They are. Ya, yeah, pero escuchen, mira, si tú dices no. un whenever they are, dice, la gran cosa de los cursos online es que puedes seguirlos, puedes seguirlo a cualquiera, cuando wherever. sea que ella esté, wherever, donde wherever. sea, donde sea. Wherever. wherever they are, yes, pretty good, number three, contact me online, mm, whatever. 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 whatever, whatever, 
whenever. Ah, cuando quieras. Whenever, whenever you need to. Need to. Cuando sí. sea que tú neces... Pero podría ser un whatever si tú hubieses dicho, mira, contact me. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever yeah. thing. Yeah. Whatever thing happened. Happened to you. Cual, okay. Cuando cualquier cosa te pase a ti. Te pase, ajá. Whatever, ajá. Whatever. Eso podría. Pero el verbo que teníamos es need. Oh, whatever. Whatever thing you need. Ah. need. Okay. But I have to use that, need Ah, because uh, the verb need to. But for example, you say listened. Listen ah, okay. to. Okay, it's like yes. need to, need to. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so talk to a part in higher education. Okay, vamos a continuar con el feedback. No, 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 estuvo genial. Tendrían esta parte de whenever. Esto y los idiom, traten de usarlo bastante. Uh, yeah, the needs you said your answers are okay. Les voy a compartir una frase que es settle down. Es un verbo frasal. Settle down. Es... Yeah, pero también aparte de sentar cabeza significa establecerse en algo, establecerse en un lugar. O sea, por ejemplo, yo ya vivo en Perú, uh, ya me quedé acá. No, ya me establecí. I settled down. Okay? Establecerse en un lugar, quedarte, buscar trabajo y quedarte allí, sentar de cabeza, y todo eso incluye yeah. settle down. Down. Settle yeah. down. Yes, settle down, settle, settle, settle down. Ah, Denise, ¿cómo dices? Tómame, tómanos una foto en inglés. Mm. Por ejemplo. Take me a picture. Yeah, error común. No digas take me a picture, dirías take a picture of. Me. No, me. Yeah, de repente viajas y les toman una foto. Please, take a picture of me. No. Take a pic... Take, sorry. Take me a picture. No. Take a picture of me. Okay? okay. Lo, lo puede notar por la respuesta que diste de la foto. Entonces, ahí está. Uh, aquí, tengo una consulta contigo, Jimmy. Tú dices, I see that people used to fly in a plane. ¿Qué quieres decir cuando dices, I used to? Ah, used to. No. Eh, suelen volar en avión, quería decir. Ah, they usually. They usually. They usually. Suelen, they usually. Okay. Really? Yes. Fly? No. They usually fly. Ah, they usually fly. Yes, cuando tú me dices they used to. I'm sorry. They, they used to. They used to fly quiere decir que ellos solían, pero que ya no lo hacen. Si tú me dices they are used to. Used to flying, yes. ellos están acostumbrados a volar. Si tú me dices they are getting yeah, used to flying, yes. ellos están acostumbrando. Por ejemplo, ¿cómo dirías? Yo estoy acostumbrado a usar mascarilla o una máscara. I am getting. No, I am used. getting significa me estoy acostumbrando, pero después ah, de la okay. pandemia ya estás acostumbrado. ¿Cómo sería? Um, I am used to. Used to wear? Wearing, a wearing, con wearing ING, a mask. wearing a mask, ok. ¿Cómo dirías? Me estoy acostumbrando a hablar en inglés. Um, I am uh, getting, getting used, used to, to speak. speaking in English, ok. Denise, había otra forma de decir que estás acostumbrado a algo. ¿Cómo puede ser? En lugar de decir they are used to flying, they are... Do you remember in in the habit of flying? Look at this, Jimmy. En lugar de decir they are used to flying, puedes decir they are in the habit of flying. Okay. Esto lo vimos en la clase anterior y aquí también they are getting used to flying. You can say they are getting the habit of Flying, ok? The habit of flying. ¿Quedó claro? Mm, ya. Yeah. Carlos, ¿cuáles las diferencias se significan lo mismo? Uh, ¿En qué está? Por ejemplo, en Perú estamos acostumbrados a comer cuy. Es cultura, ¿cierto? Ya. Yeah. Tiene que ver más con esto. Cada vez que tengas que ver algo cultural, utiliza esto y esto para, para lo demás. ¿Pero qué pasa si lo uso? ¿Está mal? No, no está mal. Pero para que lo llamamos licencias poéticas, para que tengas más variedad en tu vocabulario. ¿Ok? Sí. ¿Ok? Good. Es como decir conjunto y luego digas acervo. Es lo mismo, pero estás cambiando de palabra. Nada más. ¿Good? ¿Any questions? 
No. No se olvide. Denis, ¿puedes pronunciar circo? ¿Circos? Ya, yeah. es como si fuera una I. Circus. Circus. Cir circus. Hay un, sí, hay una expresión. This, this, this house is a circus. This house is a circus. Yo te digo, esta casa es un circo para ti. ¿Qué viene a ser? Algo es una casa de qué? De gran, muy gracioso, ¿no? De clown. Ya, yeah, en español, en español nosotros tenemos. Oye, esta es una casa de locos, ¿no? ¿Cierto? Ya, yeah, aquí no vayas a pensar que esta casa es alegre, ¿no? Porque son todos payasos. Y no, esta casa es de loco, está de cabeza. This house is a circus. This class is a circus. You got that one? ¿Entendieron ese? Yes, this house is a circus. This house is a circus. Yeah, no, no. Aquí tenemos, I enjoy talking due to the pandemic. Muy bien, uso del duta. ¿Otra forma de decir duta? Um, owing to and because. Because of. Because of. Uh, Denise, por ejemplo, yo te pregunto, do you like cooking? ¿Qué me respondes? Mm. Yes, I like cooking. Yeah, aquí. No me repitas. Yes, I like cooking. Dime, yes, I do. Nada más. Yes, I do. Ok. okay. Carlos, ¿puedo decir yes, I like cooking? Sí. Pero está siendo redundante. Es como te diga, Denis, ¿quieres ir a comer? Sí, yo quiero ir a comer. O me dice sí, nomás. Depende de cómo tú lo digas, ¿no? De repente para ti es normal decir, oye, ¿vas a estudiar? Sí, yo voy a estudiar. O te dices, sí, no, no. <risa> ¿Ya? Yeah. No, yo, no. I, I was trying to get more time. Ah, sí. <risa> ya. <Sí. risa> ya, yeah. yeah. entonces está genial. Entonces, si es en ese caso, está bien, pero ya sé bien. ¿Qué significa ya sé bien? Solo digo, ya sé bien. Just in case. Just in case, por si acaso. Muy bien. Luego dijiste algunas, ¿cómo dices algunas veces? Sometimes. Ya, yeah, pero que dijiste a few times. <risa> yes. No, pero eh, 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 aquí en este a few times, eh, no era a few times porque times cuando es plural. Tú dijiste cuando tengo algo de tiempo. Ok. When I have a few time. Tendría que ser a few time porque el time es incontable. Sería a little time. ¿Ok? Mm, sí. Tú lo dijiste como algunas veces, cuando tengo algunas veces. Veces ese cada vez que intentas algo. Luego aquí este error, ambos cometieron el error. ¿Cómo se dice cafetería en inglés? Coffee shop. No, es coffee shop or cafeteria. It's not cafetería, sino cafeteria. ¿Ok? Sí. Coffee shop. Uh, it doesn't matter. If it's dangerous, esto dijiste Jimmy, mira. It doesn't matter uh -huh. if it's dangerous, algo así. Yes, and I would like to say, come rain or shine. Yeah, luego le dijiste, estuvo genial. Come rain and shine, estuvo bien. Luego dijiste, I used to watch, igual, I usually watch, la palabra era usually watch. Ok. Yeah, I don't feel dangerous, no, 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 no. Yeah, acá hay más colorcitos. Ok, ¿cómo se dice empleados? Employees. 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 Employer, employer es el que te da trabajo, el employer, con una sola E. Con una sola E. Employee con doble E es el empleado. Con una E, employer, el que te da trabajo. Yes. I'm still on the fence. Estuvo muy bien. Aquí los, los, los idioms que usaste, Jimmy, estaban correctos. Pero hay uno que no lo usaste de manera correcta, que fue They are pulling my leg. Algo así creo que trataste de decir que ellos te estaban molestando. Yeah. En este caso, vamos a usar el pulling your leg cuando alguien te... Are you pulling... Cuando dicen algo que tú no crees. Oye, mañana... Oye, me vi a Shakira ayer en el parque. Are you pulling my leg? En ese caso. Ok. Mm. Yeah. Pero para otros mejor usa el wind somebody up, que es me están fastidiando. Ellos me fastidian. They ah. wind me up. Ok. Solamente eso me sonó un poquito raro. Lo demás estuvo perfecto. Luego también este que dijiste es, I wish a break a leg. Tú que crees que te deseo buena suerte. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yeah, pero en este caso cuando dices, I wish you break a leg, uh, dices, ¿no? Deseo que te rompas la pierna, pero literalmente le doy te rompe de la pierna. El break a leg lo usa solo, lo usa solito, solito, y para darle buena, buena suerte nada más. En lugar de decir, I wish you break a leg, de frente, break a leg. Ah, ok, ok. Si tú le dices con todo, ya cambia el contexto, ¿no? 
ok, como que te realmente de ojalá que te rompa la pierna, no, me ahí me quedé en shock. Uh, y el último que era taco, le quería compartir este verbo, pueden ser taco la problem, taco la issue, taco la issue, taco la problem. Taco la problem, porque Denise usó la palabra How to manage yeah. difficult situations How to manage uh, yeah. How to manage Ah, otro verbo frasal que también deben usar Es get away with Si buscan en Google get away with Es salir de un juicio sin culpabilidad Pero get away with Es como me las arreglo con esto Por ejemplo, oye, me fui a de viaje Y en I got away with 10 soles, me las arreglé con 10 soles Quiere decir que comí, me hospedé todo. Get away with Arréglatelas con eso. ¿Ok? Get by. Tell me. Get by. No, get by es uh, mejorarte. Mejorar tu... So, for example, I want to get by. Superar algo, por ejemplo, alguien te destroza el corazón, termino contigo, you, you should get by. Debes de traer la página, get by. Bien uso del I'm sat on the fence, estuvo genial. Luego, Denise, dijiste social skills. En lugar de decir social skill, también puedes cambiarlo ya por un self skill, un término más. Ok, self skill, que viene a ser la forma de hablar, la forma de comportarnos. Uh, no vi que usaron ninguna expresión de, for example, uh, I have no objection, I have no objection to, I see no objection to, um, things like that. Okay, or I have no hesitation in saying that watching horror movies is a bad idea for me because I'm not used to watch movies, blah, 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 okay? So, any questions at this point? Because we we finished the, the session. Um, uh, well, I was talking to Jasper and he it is just free on, Saturday, on Sundays, yes, if I'm not mistaken. 